Hello and welcome back to the Cracking Fan YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 33, search in rotated sorted array. Before we read the question prompt, just want to kindly ask you guys to subscribe. It really helps the channel grow, so please do that. All right. There is an integer array nums sorted in ascending order with distinct values. Prior to being passed to your function, nums is possibly rotated at an unknown pivot index k where k is um, less than or equal to 1 and less than the length of our nums array. Uh, basically what this means is that our array is kind of shifted by k to the right and it may overflow and basically just end up where you started uh, depending on the length of k. So for example, if we have this array 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, it might be rotated three times and basically end up, uh, you know, 1, 4, uh, 3, 7, 0, 1, 2. So, uh, sorry, it would be rotated at the pivot index 3, but it doesn't really matter. It's essentially just rotating it a few times. So, given the array nums after the possible rotation in an integer target, <coughs> return the index of that target if it's in nums or minus 1 if it's not in nums and you must write an algorithm with big O of log n runtime complexity. There's two examples here, kind of stupid to look at them because the question is pretty straightforward. But anyway, if this is our array and target is 0, then target is here, which is index 4. And uh, if this is our array and target is 3, obviously there is no 3 in this array, so we return minus 1. So what we want to do for this problem, given the constraint of a log n runtime complexity, we know that we need to use a binary search here. And the reason that we want to do this is because the array was initially uh, sorted in ascending order, right? And even though we have this pivot, what that means is that at some point it's going to be split such that the array is no longer increasing but everything to the left of that pivot point is sorted and everything to the right of that pivot point is sorted. So if we look at this array, everything after the seven is sorted in increasing order and everything to the left of it is also sorted. So that means from the four to the seven is sorted and then zero to the end is sorted. So we can actually use this to set up our binary search. We have to be a little bit careful because we have to be mindful of that somewhere in here we could potentially have a split uh, and that will you know we'll have to take care of that during our binary search but other than that it's going to be a standard binary search now I want to get rid of a lot of this text here because it doesn't leave me much room to actually go through the problem so in a second I'm going to actually wipe away all of this question prompt and example and we'll just walk through the question with just one of the basic test cases and we'll think about how we can actually set up the binary search to take into account that we actually have these rotations and see how we're going to find our target if it's in our array. All right, let me get rid of all this text and I'll see you with a blank canvas. So we have our basic example here. Now let's think about how to actually set up our binary search. So with any binary search, we need to set up our left and our right pointers. So the left pointer here is going to be set to zero and the right pointer is going to be the length of our nums minus one. So, so we're going to say len of nums minus one, which in this case, this length is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is going to be six, right? Okay. So we are searching for a value here. So because we could potentially return from inside the binary search, let's set up our while loop with while left less than or equal to right. And if this breaks, then we can simply return minus one because that means that we haven't found it, uh, but we'll get to that in a second. So what we want to do is we want to figure out our midpoint. So we always know that our midpoint is going to be left plus right. Um, integer divided by two. Then what we want to do is we want to get our midpoint value. And what we want to do is go through our edge cases, uh, sorry, not our edge cases, our three cases here. So the first case is that the mid val actually equals to the target, in which case we have found our target, obviously, so we're done. So all we need to do here is just return the uh, midpoint index because that's the what we're looking for, right? We're looking for the index. So that's the easy case. 
Uh, the second case is that it doesn't equal to the target, so we need to actually be clever. Now, let's say that uh, we have our numbers here, uh, and we'll rewrite them for clarity. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 1, 2. Let's say that um, our left is this 4 here, our right is this 2, and our midpoint, what is it going to be? It's going to be this 7 here. Now, what we want to do is we want to basically figure out what part of our array is sorted. Because remember, we have that breakpoint, and we can see that it's here uh, between the 7 <clears throat> and the 0, where basically the array, uh, the pivot happened, right? <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to check, OK, is my array sorted uh, from the left of the midpoint? And the way that we're going to check this is if that is true, uh, then what's going to happen is the, the value at the left, so nums of L, if nums of L is actually um, less than or equal to the nums at mid, then that means that this part of the array must still be sorted. So that tells us something important. So if this part is still sorted, then what we want to do is we want to actually check whether or not our value that we're searching for is in that range. So what's going to happen is if our value is actually in this range, uh, then we need to move our right and our left pointer up accordingly. So what's going to happen here is we're going to say, OK, do we, you know, if our value is in this range here, then we need to either move the left up or the right down. So what we can do is we can say if nums of L, if the nums at the left is actually less than or equal to the target, and this is less than the mid val, so that means that our target is contained between the left and the mid val indices, the values between them, then at this point, our right needs to move down. So in this case, the right is going to become mid minus one. And the reason it's mid minus one is because we've already established that the mid doesn't equal to our target, so we can now rule it out as our mid. So the right becomes uh, mid minus one. Otherwise, if this doesn't hold true, then that means that uh, we need to actually move our left pointer up because we need to now search in this part of the array. So we're going to say otherwise left is going to be mid plus one. Okay, so that's that case where basically this part of the array is sorted. But what about the other case where maybe this part isn't sorted, but this part is. In this case, we're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to have to change our check here. So in this case, in case number three, where basically the right side of the array, so basically from the mid to the right uh, pointer is actually the sorted part. We're going to say if the mid val is actually less than the target, and remember it can't be equal to the target because we've already established that the midpoint doesn't equal to the target. So if the mid val is less than the target, which is less than or equal to nums of right, then what that means is that our <clears throat> uh, we basically need to move our left pointer up uh, to basically search that part of the array. So we're going to say left is going to be mid plus one. Otherwise, we want to move our right to be mid minus one. So that is basically our three cases here. And if it seems confusing, don't worry about it. When we go to the actual code editor, we will go through this, type it out line by line. It should be a lot clearer. And one thing I didn't mention is that if we don't find it within this while loop, then we just want to return minus one because it's not in the actual array. So with all that said, let's actually go to the code editor and type out all of these cases and make it a lot clearer. I apologize. I am writing with a mouse. I don't have an iPad and one of those fancy Apple pencils. I'm still using my mouse until the channel gets a bit bigger. So if anyone wants to donate one of those, I will uh, love you forever. But until now, you guys will have to suffer through my uh, writing with a mouse. Anyway, let's go to the code editor and not waste any more time. We're back in the code editor. Let's type this up. So the first thing that we want to do is actually set up our binary search. So we're going to say 
uh, left equals to zero and right is going to be equal to the length of nums minus one. Now what we want to do is set up our while loop. So we're going to say while left less than or equal to right. We now need to calculate the midpoint index. So that's going to be left plus right divide by two. And the midpoint value is going to equal to nums of mid, obviously. And now let's actually check whether or not our midpoint value equals the target, because if it does, we're done. So we're going to say if <clears throat> midval equals to the target, then we can simply return the index that we found that midpoint value at, which is our mid variable. Otherwise, we now need to basically move our left and right pointers up accordingly. So in the first case, if the midval is actually greater than the uh, nums of a left, what this means is that from left to the midpoint, our array is sorted. So we want to check whether or not our target is in that sorted part. If it is, then we need to move our left and right accordingly. If it's not, then what we want to do is we want to search the other part of the array, which will be the sorted part. So <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to check if nums of L is actually less than or equal to the target and less than the mid value, then what we want to do is we want to move that right down because the right is too far. So we need to search from basically the left pointer to mid minus one. So we're going to say right equals mid minus one. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to search from and move left equals to mid plus one. All right. Otherwise, if this isn't true, then we want to search the right part of the array. And we again, we need to check whether or not, um, you know, our value is in within a range. Otherwise, we would need to move our left and our right accordingly. So we're going to say if the midval is actually less than the target, oops, target, which is less than our nums of right, <clears throat> then we want to basically search that um, from the, the midpoint on. So we're going to say mid plus one. Otherwise, we're going to say right equals mid minus one because we want to search the left part of the array. So if we find our target within this while loop, great, we're going to return. Otherwise, when the while loop breaks, that means that the value is actually not in the array. So as the problem tells us to, we want to return minus one to indicate that it doesn't exist. Let me just run this, make sure I didn't make any syntax mistakes and it looks fine. Submit it and we are good to go. Accepted. So what is the time and space complexity for our algorithm here? Well, we know that for the time complexity, we're performing a binary search and binary searches are going to have a complexity of big O of log N. So that is our time complexity. And for the space complexity here, the only variables we have are these two integer storing variables left and right. And that is going to be a constant space allocation. So time complexity is going to be big O of log N and our space complexity is going to be big O of one. So that is how you solve search in rotated sorted array. This question is really similar to find the minimum in a rotated sorted array. Basically, you can kind of use the same uh, mental model to solve both of them. Obviously, you're doing uh, two different things in each of the questions, but the way that you'll approach the problem is very similar and the binary search is basically the same. So I hope you enjoyed this solution video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and a comment. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm and helps the channel grow. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. I've made a lot of videos and I plan on making a whole lot more. So please subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. And otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.